So um, we're going to go show our respect and basically ask for permission to enter a sacred space. Aloha, it's 365Y with Eric and Julie Zemelis. And today we're going to talk about the Mauna Loa eruption, which started last Sunday night, and it was a crazy week. Uh, you want to start with it? Sure. So that was on the 27th, and the uh, earthquake hit at around 11 o'clock at night. Right. And I was uh, awake at that time, which I'm usually not. And it just, it was interesting. It was like a rolling jello earthquake, not like a sharp one. Usually they're loud here with sound and everything. This one just kind of felt like the ground rolled. Yeah. Then, it was so quiet that I actually slept through it, which yeah. I never do. And then I went to bed, and approximately an hour later, my son wakes me up and says, Oh my gosh, Mauna Loa is going off. Yeah, and then he said, go outside, you can see the glow. And I'm like, what? So we walk outside, and you seriously could see the glow from the, our house here below Hualalai. And since we didn't get here until 1985, of course, we didn't know of any other eruptions that you could see from Kona, because this the last time Mauna Loa uh, erupted was 1984, and uh, that's the last time Kona residents were able to see lava. Right, and then we, so we ran outside and did a video, so you guys can check out that video of us, you know, startled, thinking, oh my gosh. So at that point, then we jumped in the car, and we thought it was going down towards uh, the south area because that's probably where it was going to go and from the from the looks of where it was we assume it was going to go south so we started driving down there to figure out if we could get close enough to see a better view and we got all the way down to where the bypass road was and we realized that uh, number one it wasn't there and number two that there was a lot of people that were self-evacuating from that area and if we'd gone any farther we would have probably taken hours to get back up so right because it's a one-way road yeah so we decided that was not a not a good plan so yeah. then we thought we had a friend that said hey you could probably see it from uh, uh, old a because that's where you can see the um because uh, she was here, uh, she grew up here, and she said that's where people went to see it uh, when it erupted in 1884. Yeah. So we started heading down in that direction. And then we ended up stopping at the pier, and the pier was spectacular. It was great watching the, uh, the you could see the, right over, you could see the town, and you could see the thing. It was it was a really good picture. Yeah. We still didn't know quite what was going on yet on that. So then we decided that come morning, it was time to go check out the uh, flow itself. And so we headed up uh, uh, to the saddle road uh, around 830, somewhere around there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, we could see it coming over it was about a quarter of the way down from at that point and you know the lava fountains were going in we got another video that we shot for that one too so we've been shooting a lot of video this week we've been <laughs> going to my lawn i mean my lawn uh, yeah <laughs> um, so anyway so we got a good video of kind of there but it's a daytime so it doesn't have the same uh glow effect as it does at night uh we had gotten contacted by newsweek um for the photos that we took at the pier and they asked to use not only the picture but also a short video that uh, i had put on uh, instagram and uh that ended up with over like a hundred and some odd thousand views uh, but um, we also got um, interviewed by KCBS in San Francisco and we were able to do a live interview with the radio station as we were standing on Mauna Loa watching the first part of the eruption yeah which is pretty cool yeah so uh, so uh, the next day that same night right it was the same night to go see the lava coming down the side of the mountain at night we were able to park where it was legal right yes because we were having problems with people going down there and parking on the side of the highway, causing uh, problems. Yes, yeah, so there that. was it was it was definitely chaos that that night. Yeah, I mean, there so was, for two uh, nights it was there chaos. There was more people there than you can shake a fist at. Nobody was moving anywhere. The car it looked like a giant parking lot, and everybody was trying to park all these different places off the road, and they they're, they're it was just a big problem is what it was. Um, so we got a chance to watch sunset. It was awesome. Yep, right? and you and we did a video on that too. So I'll link them all down <laughs> below if you guys want to see Chronicle. Yeah, what you happened. guys see how it all happened. Yeah, uh, but uh, seeing the lava coming. Um, uh, down the mountain and just being in reverence and awe that yeah. this was happening in our lifetime. I, well, I can say it's know? it's very epic. I mean, you know, you, you can look at it in a picture and go, oh, isn't that beautiful? But when you see it in real life, it's like, wow. I mean, it's just yeah. it's just hugely, it, just the scope of it is, you know, it, it's you're like, oh, it's you can forget that even it's three miles away and it looks like it's right there, you know, so it's definitely a lot. Yeah, and you can way. see the fountaining with your bare eyes from the top of the, yeah. the mountain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, so what we thought was, wow, uh, this is so epic that you know, let's uh, you know, we'll, we'll put we'll go home and put together the video. So we didn't get home and it took us. Oh, we were stuck in a car accident that night. Oh yeah, it took us it took us two hours to get home. Yes, yeah, so and, and we got a fast way out. A lot of people really got stuck for a long time. Yeah, uh, we ended up going in the back roads, but it, it did work out. But there was just too many people there. Right. So every time we go up to Mauna Loa, it turns into basically almost like a four or five hour adventure. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. this is. This is why it's been a crazy week. So then um, we went home, put out the uh, video, yep. right? And then our friends said, can you take me up there next time you go? And so we ended up a couple days later renting a seven-passenger
passenger minivan yes. and taking a bunch of single women. <laughs> Eric was the Mac Daddy driver. <laughs> and uh, we all went up to the pool again. And by that time, we could also see that more and more people had started coming to yeah. experience it. Right? Yeah, yeah. But a lot of people had already had. So, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. no, there's it more. There's just as many yeah, people. Okay. Yeah. So um, it's funny because uh, the, um, the the uh, social media pages, Yeah. it's it's the lava flow flow of social media. Everybody that I think I knew that had so if you got, yeah, if you guys don't have friends in Hawaii, then you might not be getting much of it. But all of our friends are in Hawaii, so we're probably seeing. I mean, we must see forty or fifty pictures a day. Uh, like I took one picture, I think it was really cool. It was the moon and the uh, pool yep. as yep. a background, and I put that on social, and that kind of went nuts. Yeah. So it's a. Uh, I feel like Eric and I are citizen journalists. <laughs> really. <laughs> yes, we are. Um, the only news coverage that they really have on this island in terms of video um, is when they fly over reporters from Honolulu. Yeah, and while we were there, the AP guys were there. The uh, a AP uh, News was there. And and uh, we happened to have our friend, our Hawaiian friend, was with us, and she was uh, paying homage to Pele at the uh, uh, at the altar. Uh, yep. My, what emotions do you feel? The dances, the dances of Hawaii, the dances of the volcano of Pele, and all the legends of the islands that are part of the whole creation of the entire world, not just these islands. And those stories come from many different islands, from New Zealand, from Australia, from all of the indigenous people. So now let's get into the questions about what, what what's going to happen, because uh, everybody's got questions on how this works and what's going on. And the, but the first question that everybody is, is asking right now is, will the, it used to be when the lava was going to cross the road, but now the question is, if is the lava going to cross the road? And as of today, which is Saturday, the... Third, third, <laughs> third. Uh, it, the lava has slowed down uh, and fanning out. And fanning out. So there, and so it's not as it's not. It doesn't have as much coming down. So the question is, is it going to make it across the road? It's still about over two and a half miles away. So. Uh, to get there, so that that we don't have an answer to that, but it's just that's the that's the in a, if now if it does cross the road, that's going to be a big deal, just right, because that's right. the main artery between Hilo and Kona now, and it would take anybody would put another hour on their trip both way uh, each at way. least. So it's going to yeah. be a, a definitely. So uh, a bunch of people say that uh, because so many more people have moved here since they built Saddle, yeah, that it would uh, really increase traffic around the whole island. So that's why when we're saying you know it, it's all beautiful and wonderful, but um, if this uh, wonderful natural disaster ends up <laughs> going over our Midway Highway, it's going to affect every single person who lives it on is. this island. And so, labor terrorists. So one of the other questions is, uh, how is the VOG, right? Because there's a lot of a uh, lot of lot of uh, volcanic material that is being moved at this point. And what's interesting is that I would say the VOG is 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 not well. First of all, yeah. it's going up, and it, it's not it's not coming to Kona, which is a nice change because yeah. usually it's, we get it. Know, usually get it. We get it. in 2018. We got it really hard for a long period of time. Yeah. But what they're saying is that because the volcano is higher, that the VOG is staying up higher and is going different directions. So uh, uh, it seems to be that way. We haven't had much VOG yet, but we, yeah, you know, we'll see yeah, what happens with yeah. it. We, and just to, to give you guys a little bit about that, when it was coming out of uh, Holly Mau Mau Crater in Volcanoes National Park, you're at 4,000 feet. So it just come up and basically just wind up into Kona. At uh, Mauna Loa, it's at 10,000 feet, which puts it closer to the troposphere, which is, then takes it and just takes it away. So... Um, I have not heard from any of my friends around the island that they're really having problems with the bog. Yeah, and side note, the, the top of the volcano is almost 13,000 feet. Yeah, but I guess this caldera is at 10. Oh, is it only 10? Well, well, that's what started. the meteorologist okay. said. All so, right, uh, there you go. I, I I've I been watching every press conference to be uh, able to maybe summarize it and give it back to my 365 people. So Okay, so then if you're on the island, everybody says, well, where's the best place to see the uh, to, to see the flow, of course? Uh, and I, I can answer that, is that they opened up a new section, the old Saddle Road, which when we first got here, we used to take over here before the new one was put in. And they... I, I wonder if they moved the new one over to this side to cut down on having lava problems for just this reason. Yeah. <laughs> but, but as it's coming up, it's on the, it's in the it's in the training area, and you can go there, and it's a lot closer, and it makes it really it's a really looks like a really great great space to be. And from my understanding, they opened it both ways now is what they did. That's why. Right. Well, yeah. unless someone was making fun of the person who went the wrong way. Yeah, it could be. Because um, um, what they were trying to do is keep it one way, one so way, people so nobody weren't get, getting yeah. hit. Yeah. And uh, but it was quite crowded the day we were there, which was not last night but the night before. Um, just and the problem is that at the end you have to make a left turn, which makes it a little more difficult because there's a full line of cars to get there also. Yeah. So you pull up your car, right? And then you just sit there and seriously, like it's fountaining that's coming down on the thing. I mean, seriously, there's no easier way to see lava right now. I don't think in the world. Yep. And then the right. question is, what t what's the best time? I can tell you the best time not to see the lava. Let's start with that. <laughs> don't get there at seven o'clock. Okay, that's that's the worst time. Right after sunset, everybody shows. 
shows up, they had their dinner, they drive up. It's just not a good time. Uh, things start to taper off probably well, when we were there on Thursday by 8 30, it already looked like it was starting yeah, to Yeah, one of my friends who bit. came up at nine said it was pretty good. Yeah. But you know what people are saying now? Yeah. They're going at three and four in the morning now. Yeah, and the morning might be spectacular because you can actually see the, the sunrise, sunrise kind of come up also. The sunset wasn't bad uh, as well. Uh, we got there at sunset, which was which was yeah. pretty cool. Well, and also because of the way that the um, island um, tropical air works is that um, as this as the island heats up, mm -hmm. it starts to pull in the marine layer, which yeah. then creates more clouds in the valley. So when we were there, also the mist and the the fog came in, and then the night before that, people said they got completely clouded out. Yeah. But all the photos I've seen of people getting there first thing in the morning are always the because the the, the hasn't pulled the weather in yet. So yep. it's crystal clear up there at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, people were wondering, how long is this uh, eruption going to last? Ah, so that's a good question. <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> no one knows. But, uh, <laughs> it, but uh, they from do what say, we, yeah, yeah, we have heard that it has been slowing down. There's only one fissure open left. Now there was four before. So uh, this might be one of the ones that is a smaller one that is not going to continue on and, and bust out all over the place. Yeah, and they basically said that in the uh, history of Mauna Loa that um, this is usually a short-lived volcano mm -hmm. with its eruptions. And unlike Kilauea, which went off for 30 years one time. The last time they erupted uh, only went for six weeks. Yeah. And and then one of the other questions was, is it going to, like, uh, so what happens is it breaks out at various places along Mauna, Mauna Loa. And it could be uh, uh, the south side of the island. It could be the Hilo side of the island. Or it could be even north going uh, towards uh, uh, Waikoloa area as well. But uh, it doesn't look like that's going to happen because it seems to have lost a lot of its, uh, uh, the magma is going. And they're saying they're not detecting any earthquakes, which is kind of the pre predecessor to what's going to happen. That's right. Later. They said, due to the lack of seismic Mysticity, <laughs> seismicity, yeah. uh, that the um, they do not foresee any fissures at this point opening up to threaten right. any part of Ka'u or uh, Kona districts, which gets a whole bunch of people breathing a lot easier at night right now. Yeah, and we suppose uh, so. I, we just heard that the rental cars are all sold out right now, also because there's so many people that are here trying to find the trying to find the lava. Um, how long to stay up there to really enjoy it? So here's what we did, just to give you guys perspective of it. We got up there before before the sun set, which is a good time because you can still drive and park, and it's all easier. You're not dealing with all the quite the, the people are not there yet. Uh, and then find your parking place, and then you're kind of good. And then we kind of see this because the sunset's pretty spectacular too. By the way, I got another video on that a 10 second sunset that's really good uh, time lapse. It's spectacular. Uh, and then um, with that, then we had we brought we brought picnic, picnic up there. We picnic both times, and it was just really a fun fun time to be up there. And we were not at the. Uh, you can also go up to the uh, Ma uh, Mauna Kea visitors area mm -hmm. to see it, which is really great. So it's across the way. But by that time, it's pretty far away. The Volcanoes National Park are saying as well is if you go to the park, mm -hmm. you can actually go and see the uh, lava lake at the caldera in Hale Mau Mau, and across from that, you can see the Mauna Loa eruption. So they said very, That's very, very few opportunities to see two volcanoes going off at yeah, once. Yeah, and I heard that it just snowed recently on Mauna Kea, too. So you can see the, 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 the famed fire and ice because Mauna Kea is supposed to be not... Yeah, that's, it's a, she's the the uh, the goddess of uh, ice and snow, right? And then Pele is the goddess of fire. Who people of cultural mm -hmm. background mm -hmm. saying, please remind people, but mm -hmm. this is not a place where you're going to walk across the lava and go poke some sticks in the oncoming lava flow. Yeah, well, uh, very culturally insensitive. Yeah. Do not do that. Two things you're not supposed to do. Uh, one of them is walk out to the lava. It is on a uh, it's on private land, and they don't encourage that at all. And yeah. it's and it's, it's the really, military and, private land, and, and it's really dangerous too, just because you know this is an old lava flow in the middle of the night. You're going to walk in a hole and get, get stuck. It's not a place to go. And the other thing that uh, as it came up is they have uh, 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 have no drones also because there's a lot of people that want mm. to take their drones and go flying up there. They now have a, a uh, um, uh, of no fly restriction. Yeah, no fly, not, no fly zone uh, up there. Make sure that nobody does it. Yeah. And I didn't do it either because I, I know not better not to do any <laughs> drones up there. And I'm telling you, Eric and I, the freaks that would seriously walk out to the lava and like go, go, hey, here we are. Yeah. But disrespectful and against the law. Yeah. So we're just telling our viewers. Okay, so we uh, wanted to give you guys kind of like what was going on here this week. It's been the most, uh, I'd say, the most exhausting week of our yeah, lives. Yeah, we've been. Um, because the fact that uh, we've gone there three times and it's a huge experience to go each time. And also, um, there's an energy on the island, too. I think people are saying they're feeling. It's just like this, like... Um, it's, a, it's a nervous, excited energy. It, yeah, nervous, excited energy. And yeah. everyone's just, you know, trying to get up there and they're trying to find people to go up there with. And so, yeah. um, really, really a good time to be on this island. It just shows that we're lucky to be here at the heart of creation. And check out our website, 365 Hawaii Living. My blog posts have a lot of these videos that Eric is talking about, and I wrote like little blog posts so you guys can learn a little bit more about what we went through. And also, lastly, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We are coming close to 10,000, which is very exciting to us. 
we're actually real. I consider us real, real vloggers when we hit 10,000. Yep, yep. So we're 800 yep. away. So if you guys can help out and hit that, hit the subscription and hit the uh, notification button so you get to see all our new videos that come out. Here we go. So with that, we say hey, aloha. aloha.